Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the New Jersey Multi Species Podcast. We have finally found Matt Nelson or Chris Pereira, wh- whichever you prefer to call him. He is back. Listen, Somewhat. Facebook does not let you change your name. Okay. People have told me, oh, no, you got to do that. Nothing works. It doesn't work. I'm not making a whole new Facebook just because it says Matt Nelson. What you do don't you have prefer- to introduce me as Matt Nelson every prefer- time. What do you prefer to be called? By my actual name is fine. <laughs> okay, so Chris is back from Florida. We have a ton of uh, info to pack into this episode in a very short time. We went crappy fishing, I think, what, the day before you took off for Florida? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I went earlier in the week, and it was so insane that I was just like, I got to go again before I get out of here for Florida. So we hit it. We hit it later in the day, um, literally the day before I left. Yep. And it was probably... Uh, I don't know about you, but it was the best uh, crappy fishing I've seen in my life. Uh, Not numbers-wise, obviously, um, but size-wise and fish quality-wise was the the most amazing I've ever seen on public water in my life. Unbelievable. I can maybe off the top of my head think of one, maybe two other days off public water with better quantity in that same quality. But it was that amazing. was definitely up there. Yeah. And we have the video. We have GoPro video from the whole thing that we haven't posted yet because we're nervous to post it. Right, Chris? We're, 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 we're nervous to post it. I mean, I, it doesn't really... I mean, to me... My rule of thumb with, uh, you know, posting any videos and pictures is kind of just like, you know, we don't say the name of the place, right? So there's no free gimmies on that. And, uh, you know, if there's nothing that stands out in the background of the video or the pictures, I mean, basically, if you've fished the lake before and you look at a picture or video... And you know where it is. Who really cares? You've already been there. You know where it is. Um, You know. So. I I am fine. Like. Because the GoPro is new. Somewhat new to me. And I'm seeing. It's really hard to. I'm used to. Like taking pictures. Being careful that you can't tell. Where I am in the background. I'm noticing. With the GoPro video. That's impossible to do. So. I'm now stuck with these awesome videos that I want to share, but at the same time, uh, it kind of could fall into that spot burner category where you really don't want to be. Um, so yeah. it's a gray area. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how to handle it yet. I mean, look, it, it kind of sucks that we even have to think about this, but there's just there's just not enough. We well, got a lot of good. I would, love, good... I, I would love to ju- I'd love to show people the video and say, oh, th- I mean, that video is awesome. So many people uh, looked at the lake trout video and they loved it. I, the, I'd love to share this crappy video just so people could see um, how big the fish were. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's kind of like you got to walk that line like, you know, we want to share a certain amount to kind of give back because, you know, we get a lot of information from the internet and you kind of want to give back a little bit, but you don't want to give back too much because then one, you've got, you know, you could end up with some kind of mob scene at some of these places. And, you know, two, the the type of people that are looking for easy ways to get on fish not going to respect the fishery so it's like those kind of people you don't really want there in the first place um but you do want to give back something so it's kind of tough to walk that line and you know 
the pictures with pictures a little bit easier than with video, I guess. Actually, if I could just ask everybody that's watching the podcast, email us your opinion. What what what's your opinions on um, putting videos up? I'm going to ask uh, L this question later because I know she films a lot of video too that she's afraid to post because she doesn't want to. She's a land-based saltwater fisher gal, so I think those spots are, like, really precious, you know, so she's, like, even more nervous. But freshwater spots aren't easy to come by, but I kind of feel like even if I post, even if we post the video, we we could go back to the same exact spot tomorrow anyway, and those fish are gone. They moved on to a new spot that'll take us another three years to find, but... Um, yeah, email us, email us at, um, whatever our email is. I don't even remember it now at NJ multi NJ multispecies at Gmail. What's your opinion on posting YouTube videos fishing? Does it make you a spot burner or is it cool? Let's hear from everyone. I'd love to get this opinion. Yeah. I mean, look, like when we decided to start doing this podcast, uh, you know, one of our big golden rules was basically that, you know, we're, we're not coming on here to, to give away, you know, secrets or like spots. And it, it's just, it's just, we're, we're purposely never going to cross that line. But I, I do, you know, you kind of have to, you have to go somewhere. You have to, share something you have to give something back i feel like you know you, okay so let's guys it, that let's make it let's let's put the vote email us and if uh more people call me a spot burner we'll keep the video if more people tell us uh videos are cool and we're not spot burners i'll release the video how about let's do it like that let let the people vote yeah i, I don't know show show the video to some people that already know the area and see what they think. I don't know. I mean, I could watch that video and not even know where I am. And I was there. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not that obvious. It's Well, you did you did fall off the chair twice while I was driving the boat. So That's true. That's also on every um, social media app we have. All right, let's move right on because now we're just wasting time. Amazing crappy day. Email us if you want to see the video. We might let it out. Um, moving on, we have, I have reports from all over the place. Um, no skillful angler updated board yet. Like I have been saying, we know of a few fish that have been entered that are going to change, uh, the board, but they have not been entered yet. So I have no skillful angler, angler updates this week. Um, Chris, what do you have from, uh, Aaron Graybill and the Lake of Pacon guide service crew? Uh, I mean, the night bite is starting to heat up. I mean, I think we've got another couple of cold nights this week, which, you know, that's going to kind of not put everything to a hold, but it's definitely going to kind of slow down the the progression of of what we're waiting for is kind of like that night bite uh, anarchy. But uh, it's definitely... The night bite's go, slowly starting. It's yeah, slowly. If you, you, know, if you go out there, if you go out there late in the day and you fish into the dark, and you're in the right spot, you you could find some nice fish already. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that's Lake Pack on report. We're gonna when L comes on later, we're gonna give away two free passes. Well, we're gonna tell you how to win two free passes. Uh, we got the email from Scott Howard. On his colonoscopy, he sent photos. Uh, everything's clear. They removed one polyp, and he has to go back for a routine one four years from now. So good for Scott Howard. It all worked out. And Deuce, thanks can for you the, throw up the picture? Uh, I he sent four pictures of the complete inside of his GI tract to our thing. That automatically enters him at a chance to win the trip later. So he's in one hundred percent. No, 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 no. He has to re- <clears throat> he has to submit the pictures after we start the contest. You get all right. Prior pictures sent- don't count. 
Send the fish, though. That picture of the, what he sent is god horrible. I don't want to see it ever again. It's awful. I can't believe that's a hel- That's even healthy. Hey, that. Oh, God. Never mind. Moving on quickly. Tournaments. There was tournaments everywhere. Tournaments on Lake Apacon. Tournaments on Round Valley. Um, Round Valley, uh, first tournament of the year. I always get them confused. One... One of they're they're the they're the Yanettas. One of them is the dad, and one's the son. One's Justin. One is Matt. I think the dad's Justin, right? The older, I, the, I think Justin's the. I, I always get right. it. I really don't think that's right. It might not be. I totally might be wrong. Okay, I'm totally wrong. The son is Justin. The dad is Matt. Matt is the one that won. Round Valley Fisher person of the year last year. And the son, Justin, is the one that I believe won uh, Round Valley Youth Fisherman of the Year. So now Round Valley had its first tournament of the year um, this weekend. And I think now what's going on is the Justin Yanetta, who was the little guy that won the little division is now fishing in the adult division. That's what I think's going on, unless I just have the whole thing twisted up. But this kid, nevertheless, he caught a three pound, uh, 3.2 pound brown trout. So he won the trout division. Um, and then he catches a two point, uh, 2.7 pound, 21 inch lake trout that wins the lake trout division. So now this kid just stepped up into the adult division and, uh, took the first tournament across the board. So this is I guess, literally you're telling me this is literally his first contest out of the youth division into the adult division division? I believe so. Yeah, I think this was the first tournament of the year. Um the father won last year. I talked to the father at the meeting. I got to meet him. He was a great guy. Um the son, this kid that won that I believe is Justin Justin Yanetta. He right. has a he has his own lure company, um, Big Buck Baits. I Big Buck Baits. I hope I'm saying that. I gotta talk to these guys to get more on them because I, I don't know them well enough. Um, I'm pretty sure it's called Big Buck Baits. I've seen some of the rubbers this kid makes on Facebook. They look phenomenal. Homemade in Jersey from this kid that's 17, 18 years old. Uh check them out. Big Buck Baits. Justin Yanetta, Facebook. But yeah, the kid stepped up into the adult division and wiped the board in both species, won both categories. So he's right on track to doing what his father did last year in being Fisher Person of the Year. Right off I mean, to a great start. That's pretty cool. I mean, uh, get him on the show. <laughs> I wonder how his dad feels. Like, his dad was having so much fun dominating everyone. Like, you got I saw his dad's tackle box, Chris. Like, this dude's tackle box was something like, um, it put some Lake Ontario guides to shame. Like, this guy had, it was the biggest spoon box I've ever seen, and it was amazing. I was like, wow, like, these guys are dedicated to just round valley fishing. But now, it looks like his son is going to whip his ass every week. Uh, every tournament, he's going to get his ass whooped by his kid well, now. Were they definitely competing against each other? I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure dad's helping. I'm, I'm sure dad's helping. I'm just breaking their balls. But I don't think dad's going to be the star anymore. It looks like the son's right. taking over. He's the headliner now. Get him on the show. Those are the types of people you want on the show. You win a tournament or something, come on the show. Come talk about it. You know, absolutely. Like, Yanetta, promote when you guys promote your company. Come on the show and t- help us figure out which one is which. We want to <laughs> talk to you both. And congratulations on what you did this weekend. Absolutely phenomenal. Now moving on to Lake Opacon. The Knee Deep Club had a tournament. Um it was a pickerel and trout tournament. Uh, Chris, obviously, you didn't fish in it. Um, it was I didn't even. I, I didn't even know that it was going on until like I got text messages from some people 
that said, um, oh, are you fishing in the pickerel contest? And I, I, I didn't even know. So, but the results for that. Um, in yeah, the before, real quick, real quick, before you go into the results, just to, off of that, um, you know, it's kind of tough for us to keep track of everything. And that's why we kind of made Instagram page, we made a Facebook group, you know, uh, get on there and post it on there. And then if there's a better chance that we'll see it and not miss it. Um, you know, I was out of state, Joe was doing some other stuff and, uh, you know, we just, we missed it or else we would have announced it the week before and maybe gotten a couple more guys to go jump into it and made it that much more, you know, entertaining and competitive, you know, post, post that kind of stuff in the Facebook page or, or send us a message or something, just get it out there some way so that we remember to, to say something about it, you know? Absolutely. You're right. Any fishing tournament, any fishing contest, get us that information through email or immediately. We'll get it out. A lot of people don't even know these tournaments are going on and they'd love to be in them. Um, <clears throat> all right. I'm going to re I'm going to get, get deuce. If you could pull John Dorn in, uh, we're gonna get a quick bass. No, you didn't. You didn't give the results of the new deep club. I'm contest. gonna read. The, listen, I'm, while Deuce is bringing him in, I'm gonna read the results so we can okay. serve some time here. All, All right. right. So, so the trout was a one pound six ounce out of Lake Apacon. Fred Nitek, first place win. Second place, Dave Capola. Third place, Hunter Good. That was in the trout division. Pickerel Division, Chris Giarini, third place, Pickerel Fish. I think they will. I think second and third in both divisions walked away. John, hold on one second. I think they both walked away with a, um, they all walked away with gift certificates. Second place, Mike Ficino. Uh If any of you guys hear this and want to uh, email us any of the pictures of these fish, we'll um, put them up. We don't have any pictures. And first place win, Pickerel, my main man, Rob Gatos, slaying it. He just, every tournament he fishes, he seems to always win. It doesn't matter what lake he goes to. Um, That's actually how I found out about the tournament was because Rob texted me. He's like, are you fishing this? And I said, no, are you? And he's like, yeah. And then like six hours later, he won it. So Gatos, Pickerel champion, knee deep club. And now we have our ditch, our ditch pickle bass master report from John Dorn and our tournament update. John, what do you have for us now? Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I was told I got to make this quick because uh, you got to. You have five female. minutes. You're being you timed. Awesome female. From... Hey, don't interrupt me. I got five minutes. Damn it. You're right. You started <laughs> the timer two minutes ago. I know. I heard you got an awesome female angler coming on, so I was told to make this quick, short, and sweet, like Joe's crappy and bluegill. So, as far as bass goes, we have uh, everything's in pre-spawn or spawning mode now. The further south you go, the you know, the more spawning fish are around, the further north, they're kind of in a pre-spawn. It depends, and it varies lake by lake. The temperatures are in the low 60s, and that fluctuates also between the weather and throughout the day. Uh, you know, the perch and the crappie and the walleye all spawn, and then the smallmouth go on nests, and then the largemouth. And uh, I went to Stanhope to uh, my, my son's Cub Scout camp, and I caught a six-pounder over the weekend. I, I saw caught, that picture. Yeah, I caught seven bass in like 45 minutes, and uh, the, all the other ones were like two-pounders, but every fish was in a pre-spawn mode up there. There was no fish on nests or anything like that. And, uh, and what, this what's, week, go, what's going on with the tournaments? Any upcoming tournaments? Well, everything's closed now. There's a couple clubs that do paper tournaments, but we don't, and there's not many clubs that do the paper tournaments. A lot of the clubs go up to Connecticut this time of the year because it's, it's still open up there. And uh, we have a club event in Lake Zor up there this Saturday. I'm going to be going up there. And Northeast Bassmasters just had one this past Friday. And I was trying to find the results, but I, he, he didn't post the results yet. So nothing's really going on in Jersey as far as tournaments go. Okay. Okay. 
So you're not uh, you're you're kind of taking heed to what Andy still said, and you stop ripping these bads bass off their beds now. Andy Still's <laughs> not happy about this. He's not happy about anything, huh? No. <laughs> but uh, look, as, it, as far as that goes, if, if you look at Candlewood Lake Cake, for example, Candlewood Lake gets hammered from guys from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, this time of the year when the other states are closed. And that place just keeps putting fish out and out. It's a fish factory. And we take them off the nest there and bring them, weigh them in, and then release them. And it has no effect on the the fish uh not mortality but the fish developing and staying staying in the lakes you know there's still plenty of fish so it doesn't make sense to me and there's been studies also that prove that taking them off the nests aren't really gonna really hurt the fish population maybe a small lake possibly but when, when does this usually end now when do we come out of this and it's full-blown bass fishing time again out of the spawn you're saying yeah when when's it typically end uh another three weeks like i said it varies how far north and how far south you go but uh they're they're gonna be the ones that aren't spawning are gonna be spawning real soon because that's all dictated by the moon phase the length of the days and the water temperature but uh the, the ones that aren't spawning are gonna be spawning real soon and then they're going to put the feed bag on post spawn uh, to put the calories back on because they expended a lot of energy spawning, you know. Yeah, I, I didn't want Andy still yelling at me for catching bass, so I just went down to Florida and caught the ones down there that were done spawning already. They were done spawning? They looked like they were full of <laughs> They must have been eating those, tilapia, dude. Those weren't eggs. Oh, my God. They must have been tilapia in there then. They were... I'm sure there was. I saw some big tilapia swimming around just waiting to be eaten. Okay. You did a good job. That's awesome. I was very, uh, very, very happy seeing those pictures. That's awesome. Great job. John, thanks for your bash report. Um, you're, you're out of time. You're out of here. That's it. Goodbye, John. John, <laughs> at least John, we love least you. you. When are you going to cut them off John? mid sentence? Okay. Deuce kicked him. Okay, um, moving right on from John Dorn, Bass Report. I got another report from Jen Wong. I asked Jen Wong, you have any report for me this week? He said, no, I'm just catching tons of stockies. I got nothing to say. So Jen Wong's just hammering stock trout, and he has nothing to say. That's his fishing report. Hey man, um, the, the state stocks a lot of trout. I mean, you get out there and enjoy it. It is what it is. It's a put-and-take put fishery for pro, you know, probably 90% of it, you know? Get out there, you know, you go out, you could just swing by after work and catch a couple of stock trout. Like, you know, who cares? People like to knock it, but it is what it is. It, it has its place for sure. Absolutely, it does. And we got um, an email from Chase Grossman. Um, he's been fishing. He, he fishes out in that, mostly the Delaware River in the Phillipsbury area. He's been shad fishing already. Uh, he said he's catching shad catching flatheads flathead fishing he said it's kind of slow right now but it's gonna it's getting ready to get good uh but he said the shad fishing uh has been pretty good he's actually fishing in some shad tournaments so that's another thing to look at um i don't know much about that i've been talking to Dwayne about it a lot i've done it only two or three times it was fun it's something i'd like to go do Actually, if I could get hooked up with this Chase guy, I could maybe he could take me, take a shad fishing, and we'll take him fishing. Um, I think that's yeah, pretty I, much most of the info. We're gonna give at, We're gonna tell you how to give away the two. How we're going to give the two free trips away, but we're gonna do that with our guest here. So I guess we're ready to bring our guest Heaven and L outdoors in. All right, our guest today is L from Heaven and L Outdoors on Instagram. Uh, shore based saltwater angler. Actually, I gotta correct myself. I, correct me if I'm wrong. You bought a boat recently, or you? Is that true? Um, I've always been boat and land, so a little of everything. So is it our? Is it correct to call you a saltwater Central South Jersey saltwater angler, multi species? That works. <laughs> You don't do any freshwater fishing now? Um, occasionally I do. Uh, if I'm 
if I'm camping, I will definitely freshwater fish, but I just suck at it, so I stick to salt water. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's like anything else. If you don't do it enough, you're not going to be as good as the stuff you do more of. That's true. I guess I got to get out more. <laughs> One thing re- that's really interesting with you is this, like, the land-based saltwater fishing like that's something like w- me and chris that's like going to planet venus like we have no faith in it if you invite us to do it we'll probably say no and <laughs> we don't even believe anyone catches fish in salt water from land chris am i right <laughs> when i have to fish from shore i feel like someone handcuffed me to a pole and put like a plate of cake 10 feet away from me is just like, eat the cake, eat the cake, bitch. <laughs> and I'm just twitching attached to a pole. And I just, I don't know. I feel trapped. There's, there's something mentally about it that I, after 10 minutes of not catching something, I want to leave and I want to get on something that can float away and I hunt have out move. the fish. We have to move. Explain, like, try to sell us on land-based salt. Like try to get us to believe in it. <laughs> um, okay. So, I think you kind of have to know a few spots, but although with social media lately, I'm sure everyone knows now, like all different spots. Um, I mean, I literally live a block from water um, and pretty much water in all directions from where I am. So I guess I'm just kind of saturated in land-based areas that I could like kind of take my pick. So I'm very fortunate with that. But um I also get motion sickness. I get I have vertigo and stuff like that. So boat, I have to take Dramamine. And um, it's a lot of work to have a boat. Uh, you know, it's a lot of money to have a boat. It's a lot of work to have a boat. Oh, it's a yeah. lot of time to have a boat. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, big time. So I think that that kind of keeps people on land a lot also. Um, however, me- the biggest draw for me for non-land fishing is being away from people <laughs> yeah like, I, I could see that but and when you say like you said look for a spot like i i, I had i've i land based shark fish even though i know i'm not i'm actually striper fishing i just catch sharks on accident because that's illegal but you said you look for, for some sharks well i mean down in cape may now when they come up and catch come up to us they're just writing us all tickets right away but when I'm staring, when I'm staring down the beach, like even if I just went to Sandy Hook or Lavalette, I'm staring down a four mile beach that just it all looks the same. What what am I looking for? Like, structure. <laughs> what is what structure? Like, is there like a down tree in the um, like a blow down? I don't know. What 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 structures there? As far as beach, uh, anything beach goes i would say look for go at low tide and see if you can find any like cuts or sandbars or what is a cut what's what does that mean just like the way that the sand moves because they're going to all the fish are going to be sitting where there's structure they're going to either be sitting on the back side of it or they're going to be sitting on the top of it and ambushing anything i'm mostly what i'm thinking of you know where they're sitting i'm thinking of like fluke that are going to be sitting on on the side of like a mound of sand and then they're literally going to be ambushing their bait fish as it goes by them so that's what you're looking for when you're surf fishing although i will admit that i don't do as much surf fishing as any other fishing um i look like a hobbit or like a willy wonka (laughs) what are they the oompa loompas in waders um i've i've I think I finally found waders, women's waders that are like not too bad on me, but I'm vertically challenged. Although I don't find, I don't think I'm actually short, but it kind of sucks being a girl in waders. Like I feel like I'm like flumping around on the beach. <laughs> I bet so, you. Is bucks. it hard to find a lot of certain fishing gear as a female? It's is it hard <laughs> to find certain fishing gear? It is. Yeah. Um, I know that Grundens makes women's waders, and actually, I was wearing my Grundens earlier today, and I, I'm still not happy with them. I'm still not happy with how they fit, even though they're adjustable. Like, just the sizing feels off, and 
there's room where there shouldn't be room and there it's fitted where it shouldn't be fitted and yeah it sucks <laughs> um, so and everything has to be at... pink although i'm wearing pink <laughs> glasses today but everything has to be pink and i don't particularly like pink mostly because getting on a boat with like a pink rod which i actually have a pink rod and it's not by choice um chris, chris does too so that's no is problem. it the goo fish rod <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it's a pink one he has. Yeah, so, like, if I could have had any other color besides pink, I would have chosen any other color because I knew that I would get crap for having a pink rod and being a girl. Oh, look at the girl with the pink rod. It's so pretty. And then I slapped them in the face with it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the pink, the, all the pink stuff is just, it's very frustrating. I probably wouldn't have even worn pink glasses today, but they just happened to be sitting next to my laptop. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, you came on here and start bashing the color pink. You're wearing pink glasses. You got pink and purple fingernails. <laughs> I'm still a girl. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, but like, I, I mean, who the hell would want pink waders? I feel like that's got to be, you know, you, you're, you're walking around in water trying to fish. You You want some sort of you know subtlety what the hell would you want pink waders for uh i mean it's fun to look fun i guess i like bright colors but i mean the fish don't care what color rod or reel or waders you have on so it's personal I preference I the guess. rod and reel I, uh, i'll buy that but the waders <laughs> like that i think the fish see ch bright pink waders coming from a mile our, away i don't our know our friend mark mercer's down in florida right now and he's like glowing in every color imaginable did you see pictures he's, he's like yeah uh, but it looks like a rainbow but <laughs> that's not under the water <laughs> So, That's El, if you, water, take, if, you, if, you, if you took no Dramamine and went out in the bay fluking, you would get seasick? No. Actually, I was out on a boat earlier today. I actually fell asleep earlier. I was a little late to the anything? podcast. I, had, I was winter flounder fishing. I had, I had one on, uh, fell off halfway up. I think I'm still in tog mode, so spring tog. I just swung, and I thought I hooked it, and... It just it just kind of slurped it up. You know how winter flounder are. They just slurp it up. So Yeah. Do you have a chum pot out? Yeah. How many? You can keep two still? Uh, Yeah, it's two at 12 inches. Okay. Let me move over because of the sun. Is that better or worse? You're fine. I can't believe that. The sun. <laughs> yeah, we need to start <laughs> filming the podcast that night because my window is an issue too. Chris is in a dungeon somewhere, so he has no issues with any atmosphere. I mean, I understand the physics of how, like, sunlight works, so I just didn't sit directly in front of a window. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're sorry. I'm actually sitting at my fly tying desk, so. Oh, you, oh, tie you fly fish, too? Um, so I'm actually just getting into fly fishing now, but I've been tying flies for a while. <laughs> I just never fish them saltwater um, flies yeah saltwater flies really so like what did, what did you, all right go what ahead did you do go with ahead. the flies when you'd make them and then just like just as like artwork or would you um, give them to people to try out or so i've been tying bucktails and teasers for a while um and every once in a while i'd be like you know what this would be like like i would just get an idea in my head and be like this would be a really cool saltwater fly like last year um the fluke were all puking up tiny little grass shrimp and i went home one of the nights that i fluked and i was like i need to make a shrimp fly so i made a shrimp fly and i used it as a teaser um you know while i was jigging bucktail for fluke and it worked so i was like this could actually be kind of cool so then i don't know i would just get something in my head and want to make it and then i would make it and kind of let it sit there but also i have a friend who um fly fishes for tuna which is really cool. And he oh. had actually asked me to start building him like really big flies, like 12, 15 inch flies. So I've been practicing the beast fly. It's Bob Popovic's beast fly. And man, what a pain in the butt that is to tie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I have a pretty good feel for it. I think I, uh, I've, churning them out and every time it gets better and better so that is like the the main goal is to make a a very big profile 
bait fish, like bunker style, you know, at, at least 12 inches. So that way he could use it for tuna. He uses a 17 weight for tuna. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. I thought I thought 12 was the highest. 17 weight. <laughs> yeah, Joe Joe thought he was good at fly fishing. He, he, meanwhile, the guys out there catching tuna on fly I rods. A, I mean, I, I really thought that a tarpon fly rod was the max weight, like a 12 weight tarpon rod. I thought that was his bit. I've never even heard of anyone tuna fishing with a fly rod. That's insane. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'd love to talk to that guy at some point. That sounds <laughs> yeah. awesome. No, he's a cool dude. Um, and Can you get so, him on now? No, no he's an older guy. I don't. He probably still has a flip phone, you know that kind of thing. I um, have a flip phone. Like would a would you ago. W- let, ignore Chris? We're here to interview you. Forget him. Would do you spend more more of your time uh, throwing jigs and lures and swim baits, or are you a bait uh, drowner? You like Duncan bait. Um, I like a little of everything. Um, I will say though that striper is, and I'm gonna get so much crap for this. My least favorite. <laughs> Chris is gonna love you for that. Target. Chris just wants to bash stripers. That's all he wants. Um, I mean, I no. If they're not fifty pounds, Chris doesn't care. I like the smaller ones. They're fun. You don't have to worry so much about like accidentally killing them. Not that I like. Not that that's a constant worry, you know, if you know how to handle the fish, it should be fine. But I don't know. I just, I think at this point, they've done a pretty good job in bringing back the population, although there's still plenty of people out there that will argue. And that's fine. Like, I'm sure that there's science to back up whatever. But um, I don't know. I just, there's so many people tagging them now. Everyone, like, it's a main focus that you have to conserve them. You know, there's a slot put in place. You can only keep one. I don't know. I just, they're beautiful fish. I don't, it, I it's, mean. It, it, it's become New Jersey's game fish. It's the game fish of New Jersey. As much as us three don't want that to be that way, that's what it is. It's New Jersey's fish now. Yeah. I, I mean, half the time I call them striped carp because I feel like you can't get away from them sometimes. I just, I don't know. I just don't purposely target them unless they're literally right in front of my face um and then the other thing with like surf fishing is so frustrating and i guess that's part of the game like part of the chase part of the hunt whatever um a lot of guys like the whole experience of chasing stripers wherever they are in the fall or i mean i guess in the spring too but i usually target them in the fall but um you know, you'll show up at the beach and, you know, one day they could be there and the next day they're just totally not there. And it's kind of like what Chris was saying before, you know, if you're looking at them from from the land or if, if you're looking at land from land into the water and you're just like, man, I wish I was on a boat because you could cover more ground um, and you can actually chase where they are. It gets frustrating. So surf fishing, not my ideal but i do do it um the other thing is i don't like to go by myself between the fear of like my waders filling with water and i just i just not a fan of fishing early or late at night by myself so it kind of you know limits when i go so you that's have another to thing. Fit, you have to fish pretty spe- especially with land base you have to fish pretty specifically with the tides or you'll just go fishing when you have time if I, so do you guys consider land base fishing in i mean inshore or inside anything where your feet are standing on solid ground is land based okay um because yeah, like not on a boat some kayak guys will refer to inshore is anything outside the inlet, but if you're on a boat, anything inshore is from, I mean, I guess it's kind of open to opinion, but I think anything 10 miles off the beach in to, in up to the inlet and then anything in the inlet is inside. But just just so you know, like, just so I know how to reference inshore offshore and inside well, I, i'm considered those are two different totally different things 
so like the difference between inshore and offshore, that's not what he, he just means land based as in you're not in a boat. Right. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as anything land based, I would definitely say try to go at slack tide. Um, just because, especially with like tog, let's say, because I do a lot of tog fishing from land. Actually, I do most of my tog fishing from land. Um, I always try to go at slack tide just because it's easier to not get snagged up. It makes uh, it, it gets snagged in the rocks. It yeah. Makes sense. So, so you know. That- if there's a big tide swing and it's pushing your weight and rolling it around, it's just not going to get hit as much as something that's staying still and you're not going to get snagged as, as much. So if, if I'm, if I'm, so, I, you know, based off my story before about being tied handcuffed to a pole, obviously I do most of my saltwater fishing, basically all of it from a boat. So if I'm fishing from a boat, I don't want to fish slack tide because I kind of want those fish moving a little bit and, but I can do it from a boat from the shore. You can't really do it as effectively when it's moving. So basically what I'm getting from what you're saying is on that slack tide, you're able to fish these spots more effectively and that's going to equate to more fish hooked and caught. I think you have more control when you're fishing slack tide, even if you're, I mean, I guess it also depends on what species you're targeting. If you're targeting for fluke, you're kind of relying on that drift if you're on a boat or a kayak. Um, So I guess that is a factor, too, you know. Let's just say... I get get what you're saying. Let's say, hypothetically, some guy just wants to take his kid down to Island Beach State Park for the day, throw his rod out, and just hope to catch something. Does he go bay side? Does he go ocean side? What? How do you, you got? You got to give more specific. Like what? What? What's he fishing I'm for? What t- year is it? How do you get these like people that have never been sh- saltwater fishing? They just want to get down the shore and get a line in the water. Like, what's the best strategy to just start? Where? Where's the starting point? There's a <laughs> there's a lot of variables with that, but honestly, I would try. I'm not. I'm not um, 100% on the South Jersey fishing. Um, I'm out of Manasquan Inlet, so a lot of my fishing is up here. And since I'm, I'm like super spoiled that I have the water literally like next to my house. Um, so anytime I go to Island Beach is actually to go clamming. Sometimes I fluke from a kayak. Um, so I guess it really depends on the size of the vessel that they're fishing out of. You could drift the little channels back there for fluke, maybe striper or bluefish. Um, depending on the time of the year, but I would do that. I would try fluke back there. Um, what's and I would the, go in the, the back in the, in the back bay. Yeah. What's the longest tog you've ever caught from shore? I don't really measure. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, so I have like, there's a special place in my heart for Tog because there are such slow growing fish and I feel like they're completely ignored and I feel like they're actually more in danger of like being decimated than any striper population that ever existed um, because it takes them so long to grow and they are so highly poached. Um, I mean, the body of water that I'm near... I see people take bucketfuls of eight inch fish and they're out of season or out of like they're over the creel limit or undersized. I call fish and game on them. I don't really care at this point. Do they show up? Yeah, actually I have, I have a fish and game guy that knows that I live near a, a very highly poached area and he's like, just text me. So I got him on speed dial now. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Are they, are they able to get there on time? Because the couple of times I've called them, I mean, and I understand, like, that it's not like they're on call up the street, you know, but they never get yeah. there on time, Yeah. Which sucks. Um, so in one particular instance, I was talking and, from land, and I saw a guy throwing sh- very short talk into the bushes, and this was also a time when it was only – one fish at a time so he kept throwing fish into the bushes and i kept saying to him 
hey, that looks short. Like, I don't think you can keep that. And he would kind of, you know, make a face and then pretend to throw it back or, you know, oh, m- mumble yeah. under his breath, whatever. Well, and then, and then you got to be careful about that stuff, too, because you don't know what kind of, you know, someone who's going to be who's doing that to begin with probably ain't. <laughs> Um, you know that valuable of a member of society to begin with um at that point if they aggravate me that much i would probably fear for them over me (laughs) this guy's just launching short tog into the bushes like yeah i'm just catching tog throwing him into the bush here like yeah he's normal meanwhile she's cracking her knuckles like i'm gonna beat this guy's ass in five seconds see that's like the trout people i was talking about that guy should just get hit with a tranquilizer dart in the (laughs) neck without any warning he drops over and he wakes up all his shit's gone and he can't fish ever again that's it done same see see if the see if the officer that you have on speed dial can give you a tranquilizer dart and just cut out the (laughs) middleman and you just blast these guys and just roll them into the channel (laughs) I wish. Okay, so let me finish the story because it's actually pretty good. Um, So I called Fish and Game, the hotline that you can find online, and I said to them, hey, I live on on a body of water that's often poached, and um, I am literally fishing next to a guy who's throwing short tog into the bushes, and um, if there is an officer around, that would be amazing to send them out. And the woman on the line said, actually, we do have an officer in your area and we'll send them shortly. And literally within like maybe 10 minutes, I got a phone call from the guy. Maybe not even that. It was very quick. Um, And he was asking me questions and I was like kind of whispering into the phone (laughs) because I was like, he's literally next to me. This dude's still there doing (laughs) it, right? Yeah. Um, And they had asked me if I could take a picture which I wasn't really able to, like, just obviously walk up and take a picture. Um, Not that I cared at that point. But I also didn't... So here's the thing, and maybe you guys can can give me some insight on what you would do. Do you, like, say something to a guy that's obviously poaching, knowing that there's a conservation officer on the way? Or do you wait for them to, like, continue to poach so that way their penalty is more like what do you do like i'd rather see the wa- the fish in the water than like see them get a bigger ticket but also i do want them to get a big ticket you know what i mean like the what do problem, you do? Yeah, I, I, you the, 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 the my two senses every time in my life that i have approached someone it's become a very heated situation very fast that turn almost turns violent very quickly so i understand the fish are dying in the bushes but you are putting yourself in a position of it's a it's a volatile uh situation because the person's backed into a corner they know what they're doing's wrong they know you have them pinned their only defense mechanism is to try to fight you or whatever. So it's not a good situation. Me personally, I'd wait for the um, officer. I, I I would keep making comments probably, but I wouldn't approach him. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I think I think at that point, you, you did the right thing. You basically, you know either to do nothing or to just, even if, if I saw him going to leave, I would almost try to think of a way to keep, like at that point, you're just trying to keep him there. Yeah. So he actually gets caught when they get there. So in this situation, I only made the one comment. Um, and I immediately like called fish and game after that. Cause I was just so annoyed by it. So, right. um, about five minutes later, I was like, I'm packing up. I'm, I, I'm able to walk back and forth from where I am to where I fish. And um, so I started walking and I saw a, the black con- black truck, the conservation officer truck. So I walked up to the truck and I was like, I hope I'm not blowing your cover because he was kind of like wedged into a spot where he could kind of keep an eye on the whole area. And I was like, I hope I'm not blowing your cover, but he's still down there. And he's like, um, you know, can't, were you able to take a picture? He's asking me questions. And he said that there's a woman in the car. I said, I think it's that car because there's no other cars on the street. Um, and I know what cars should be on the street because I live on the street that, you know, so it was very easy to say, look, 
that car belongs to that house and this car must be theirs. So I, I don't know if he can run plates or anything like that, but I want to say it was from New York, a uh, New York license plate. And I've actually seen New York cars go from spot to spot. Cause where I am, I can see a bunch of different spots, go from spot to spot and pick up the short fish, put them in their trunk. And then they just keep picking them up and make their rounds. So that way, whoever is fishing and keeping short fish won't ever get caught with them. Wait a second. So you're telling me that this is like a ring, like yeah. the, the footmen will come out and throw the short tog into the bush yes. and then the driver comes by in the getaway car and takes them and like leaves? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. In and this I, instance, I, I don't know if it was part of like a whole ring kind of thing, but I've seen it firsthand. But so I, I bet you she sees New York plates because they're going back to this city where they're getting sold. No doubt. Yeah. They're selling them in. I'm not going to mention the town, but there's a certain town where they're getting sold. So a lot of the times these cars will have like a live one in the back because they get more money out of the live ones than if they were filleted. So they bring them back short and live. It's And it's crazy. Like, and and you, you think, like I'm sitting here and you, and you at first you think, why why don't they just put a stop to this? And then you realize that the the law enforcement for this kind of stuff, just like the money's not there, I bet. Right. So this is it's like, just, some, it's, it's some kind of a like custom built like Toyota Corolla that has a live <laughs> well in the back seat and it just transports blackfish to the city. Yeah. <laughs> so it, picks, it picks the blackfish up from the bushes and brings them to the city and sells them illegally. You're telling uh, me. The this is what L wants. Are illegally immigrating our short fish to another state. Yeah, I guess you could say that. This is fucking crazy. Yeah. All right, so let me finish the story. <laughs> oh, There's sorry. More, this I didn't even. How could this story keep going? It it does. So <laughs> so the guy was like, "I'm gonna keep watching because." And this kind of goes back to the question that I asked. You know, do you let somebody who's poaching continue to poach? in hopes that they get a ticket or do you stop them? Like, like I debated on running up to the bushes and just throwing all the tog back out, you know, out into the water. But then I, I was like, I got the fish and game guy coming and he's going to be like, where are all the fish? And I'll be like, well, I threw them back. And then he can't take them, you know? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. so the guy said, I'm going to hang out a little bit because um, the gentleman that was poaching had a woman that was walking to and from the car so the guy the conservation officer had said i think he's having the woman bring the short fish to the car so that way he doesn't get caught with them down on on land and um so eventually i guess the conservation officer saw the guy put a bag of short fish in the drainage pipe to hide them it's like <laughs> what the fuck? There's a drainage pipe. Like, um, it just kind of drains. It's a dead end, so it just kind of drains the water out of the street down, and it goes and it empties out to the to the. Uh, was he gonna to float body. it down the street? And then no, he was just hiding the them. I mean, it was dry. So eventually, the conservation officer approached him and said, "What is this that you're?" doing and the guy just flat out said i'm keeping short fish and just ticket me so that way it didn't waste time and i watched with my binoculars on my front porch actually i didn't even need binoculars really um i watched the whole thing go down on, while sitting on my front porch <laughs> it was quite entertaining um i was and gonna ask you uh, if you'd like did you just go back to fishing and watch this or did you just like go get a seat and no i was already out? i had caught a few and i was like i'm done for the day and yep i just sat there watching the whole thing happening and um the conservation officer texted me and said you know we got him thank you so much for contacting us he had eight over the bag limit undersized fish and it was about eight hundred dollars in fines and so uh, like and here's the other crazy thing right okay so this guy got an eight hundred dollar ticket and i bet you he's still doing this which mm -hmm. would mean no, I don't think so. He, I bet he ain't. I bet you he is because I bet you whatever he's making from doing this right. versus how often he gets caught and what he has to pay in those tickets. 
<clears throat> he's yep. still he's still profiting yes off of what he's doing in and fact that's the part that sucks um, there's there used to be i don't know if they still do it there was a local boat that would catch tog um with rod and reel and sell it um like commercially like a commercial tog boat that would catch through rod and reel which is actually pretty cool but um, I don't know whether it was that boat that's local or it was like a different boat that's just not work, you know, not doing business anymore. But supposedly there was a boat that used to set up like like fish pens in, I'm going to say it, the Point Pleasant Canal. And they would like catch these tog in the the pens and then... If they got caught, it literally didn't even put a dent in their profit. Like, the it, it's just absurd. So, uh, Jim Hutchinson at one point had r- written in the Fisherman magazine in an editorial, and I almost like ripped it out and like put it on the wall because it just made so much sense. The problem is that yeah, we can say, well, let's find them heavier, let's take all their um fishing gear away, seize their trucks, seize the fish, whatever. The problem is, though, that even, like, such a thing as, like, this $800 fine that this guy got, I don't know if this guy, because he's out of state, is just going to pay it and, like, whatever. But if it's anybody in state and they end up taking it to court, any judge is just going to be like, I have all this other stuff to deal with. I And, you know, like, a judge doesn't understand conservation. They're not going to feel so passionately about it like we do. They're just going to be like, who gives a crap about some short fish? You know, give them a $50 yeah. fine and then be done with it. I have all this other stuff on the docket to deal with, you know? And Jim Hutchinson had said, we really should have, like, specific judge, jury, whatever, like, fish pol- for the fish police, you know? For anything conservation minded, because then if you have a judge that's that is of a conservation mind will actually care about it and and do something about it instead of just saying just, you know, strike a deal, give them a fifty dollar fine and then be done with it. You know, because who knows how many of all of these um, examples like I follow the fish and game um, like Facebook page and they post occurrences right anytime they ticket somebody they don't give specifics but they you know tell the story and i like seeing it but also like okay we see it and yes they were ticketed but how much of that is actually put into place like how much is that is actually going to be enforced in the regular public justice system yeah i think that's a great point and uh you know i i actually we, we talked to a conservation officer on freshwater while ice fishing once, and uh, it was kind of a similar conversation where, you know, basically is like, you know, these fines, they're not enough really, you know, and, and like what you said, like, are they even paying the full fine? Does the judge even care? And then the whole other thing is... To, Even if you wanted to change those rules, you'd have to – I forget the details, but you'd have to open up all this stuff to, like, the legislature, and then you're – and then at that point, you're opening the door to some other regulations that Mm -hmm. they can put on us, and it's just a whole pile of bullshit. Right. And, I mean, I I think we should just go wild west on these fucking guys. Like, if you see (laughs) someone doing some ridiculous bullshit, throwing little fish into the bushes, you just – take their picture and we'll we'll just post it on the website and just tell everyone hey if you see this guy throw his shit in the water well you know i'm sure (laughs) that word got around that 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 you know that stupid girl at the where i fish is calling fishing game on everybody so don't go there fine don't come fishing near me don't poach near me because i don't i just great i don't have patience anymore i really don't (laughs) if that is true then that but at least it's doing something I guess, but they're probably just going to a different part of the body of water and fishing oh, and poaching somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. Yes. You're going to help us try to explain to these people how we're going to give our first two Lake Apac on trips away. Cause we're okay. Gonna, we're going to start the countdown on that. But before we do that, 
let's let you plug every you have any you have a favorite party boat you like to go out on you want to plug um any lures anything you want to plug your pages get everything out yeah this is this is an open forum you can go you ahead can get it all out whatever, whatever you, you want. want to plug say hi wow to um i yeah. don't i don't i didn't prepare this <laughs> i didn't prepare for this um what favorite party boats party boat wise um, for bottom fishing, probably the Mimi is my favorite because they limit passengers. All right, Chris, um, send them a bill. The Mimi. What? We'll send the Mimi an advertisement bill. Okay. All right, keep going. <laughs> Who's next? The Mimi. Uh, for private charters, I really like uh, the Sea Owl. Um, good friends with mate Trevor and uh, the captain Chris is really cool too. Um, You're writing this down, Chris? Yeah, I'm writing it down. Jeff. Yeah, Power. in his brain. Um, <laughs> other than that, I don't, I mean, I'll occasionally go hop on maybe the Paramount or, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, All right, it, it's on a whim. We didn't, we, didn't, I, we didn't mean to put you on the spot. We yeah. Just, people usually like to, you know, yeah, people plug like some to of plug their stuff, stuff or How whatever. about you? What, give us your, <laughs> give us again, what, give us your Instagram, your Facebook, you have a YouTube channel. Oh uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, it's all heaven and hell outdoors. If you're ever curious about any, oh maybe she's on that forum or social media or whatever, just type in heaven and hell outdoors. Although you, make sure you put in the outdoors part in most of the things because apparently I was I thought that I was very original with my name, right? It's like heaven and hell, but my name yeah. is hell. But apparently other people have also thought of that. So the outdoors will usually lead you to me. Um, otherwise, you might. I think there's like a, a hairstylist called Heaven and L. And um, I think she's gotten been, tagged a few times. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse than a hairstylist. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so definitely um, add the outdoors. Heaven, but Heaven I, and L. Not yeah. hell. Heaven and L. Heaven and L outdoors. Yes, thank you. So, okay. um, yeah, I do have YouTube. I'm planning on putting a lot more videos up there. But Joe, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, um, we just is... talked about it too before you before you came in the podcast. Me and Chris were talking about spot burning. Yeah, and... it's really hard to, especially if you're land based fishing um, boat. I mean, I'm going to be on a boat all summer, so hopefully I got some, I'll get some good video to post on YouTube, but it is extremely hard to not spot burn while you're, um, while you're land fishing. Um, and I would assume that it's even harder for freshwater. I feel like you're more like enclosed and you could see a lot more landmarks. I don't know. Maybe so, I'm wrong. Yeah, I, her her in, boat in a, basically telling us not to post video. Well. In a picture, it's not that hard. Plus, there's there's pretty easy ways where you can just cut. Like, if you got, oh, you got the red house on Albert Street in the background of the picture. Right. There's, there's pretty easy ways you can cut that out. In a in a video, I think there is a way you can edit the background. But it's, it, this is, you're talking about, like, expensive editing equipment, I, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I I've tried it. Um, I Who's use gonna a... watch a fishing video with like a blacked out bat? Like it just be ridiculous. It's not blacked out. It's just like it blurs it a little bit. Yeah. And it just keeps the focus on. People enjoy watching the doing. video and and looking at the atmosphere around it. I mean, you're gonna blur it out. I don't even want to watch the video then. Because you're turning on the videos and you're pausing it and you're zooming in on the background to see if you could read the street sign. I am, and then I'm sending it to Dwayne to see if he could enter it into some sort of a GPS device and geocatch the picture. In fact, uh, L mentioned living uh, like on four, three, three and a half sides of water. There's like ten stalkers right now trying to triangulate like where she's <laughs> going to be fishing next. All right, we're not supposed to talk about the stalkers though. That was brought <laughs> up. That was in the pre-interview that we're not allowed to talk about stalkers. Now you, now this no, has can, to get we, edited too. We're no, sending no. out a warning to them. No, cr damn it. All right, <laughs> let's give shit out. She's going to help us try to explain, even though everyone's going to mess this up. Chris, we're giving away two open boat passes to the Lake of Pack on open boats. L, you can enter to win them. You're, you, you could win them. Cool. Chris, you're going to explain this 
if you make a mistake explaining it, I'll try to <laughs> fix it because it, this is a little confusing, but once you, once you get it, it ain't that hard. So go ahead. Well, look, first things first, like just try to bear with us. This is the first time we're running this. All right. Aaron Graybill was nice enough to donate two open boat spots to, for us to give away. Okay. So the first, so there's, there's two prerequisites for you to be eligible to win in the first place. Mm-hmm. The first prerequisite is you have to like the Lake Opac on guide service Facebook page. All right. The second prerequisite is you have to be following the New Jersey multi-species Facebook page. You, no, 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 All right. no, no, that's wrong. Messed up. Let me step is in. There three stipulations? Completely wrong. We don't care at all about the Facebook page. You have to subscribe yeah. to the multi NJ multi-species podcast, YouTube channel, subscribe. And I'm already pissed. And I'm going to tell you why I'm pissed because there's 190 people in that group that are all loving it. And I only have 125 in the, in the subscriptions. So I'm going to find out which 60 you are, and I'm going to kick you out. That's what I'm going to do. But Chris is wrong. You have to like, you have to, why is everyone laughing at me? You have to like the Lake of Pac, stop! You have to like the Lake of Pac on Guide Service <laughs> Facebook page. You have to do that. We're going to check this shit, too. So if you think you're going to send in colon photos like Scott Howard and just win a trip, not happening. We're going to check that you did this. You have to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's it. So those are the two things. Now, here's the two ways to win. Send us an email that says, hi, my name is Karen, and I'd like to enter. And your name is going to go on a wheel. We're going to spin that wheel, and whoever it lands on wins the trip. That's it. That's one of them. But when you send me that email, before your name goes on the wheel, I'm going to make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you like Darren Graybill's Facebook page. If you didn't, I'm going to delete your email and you're off the wheel. Gone. Just gone, like dust. Like the guy L called the cops on. Gone. (laughs) Frank Eliezer Dark, off. So that, that, that's the, that, that is the lame ass way to win. That right? yes, that's, that's the, the that's easy. The not, listen, way. I'm not listen. There's people that listen to this podcast and they don't have Facebook, and they are interested oh, in oh, winning a okay, trip. Okay, Joe. So how are they going to win if they don't have Facebook and they can't like? I know the, who like they the are. On guide I, service page. Listen, if you send us an email and you listen to the podcast and I look you up and you don't have Facebook. I'll let you on the wheel. But if you have Facebook and you didn't do what you were supposed to, you're not on the wheel. You're out. No. Gray Bill will deny this entry. Do you have his run down somewhere? <laughs> no. We're going off okay. the cuff now. It's, All right. it's going to get bad. So that's, <laughs> that's how you win the lame one. Now, here's the other one. From the time this podcast airs, which should be, it should be like, noon on thursday right now you have one week to post any fishing picture you want in the multi-species mayhem group page whichever picture on the wall gets the most likes by the time of our next episode you win the trip so our new interactive podcast group is nj multi-species mayhem fishing all you have to do is join the group and post a picture anytime from noon today till our next episode. Whichever picture gets the most likes wins the other pass. So that's how the two passes are giving out. And same to you. Even if your picture gets the most likes, if I check on you and you didn't subscribe to YouTube, you're out. You're gone. Pick just to be just to be clear on the dates, Joe, and you can just scream I'm wrong again if I am, but that's going to be – so the, the start of the entry, so don't put anything before this date. It's going to be April 27th at around noon, when that, when that which should be around now, right? That's the start of it? Yes, yeah, sir. We're not going to look before that. Don't put anything before that for the contest. And then it's going to end, you said, a week later? Next Thursday. 
be, r- next Thursday, right before, I mean, I'm, uh, next Thursday night at about this time, 7 p.m., I'm going to go live on Facebook and announce the two winners. Well, that's May 4th. Yes. So you have until May 4th at 7 p.m. Right. So make sure... And make sure it's clear when you when you put up your fishing picture, fishing report. I mean, it could even if you go out fishing and you catch nothing, and you take a cool sunset pick, and you that could be your submission. And You're gonna lose. Just you will not win I've, with a sunset pick. If I, you if you win the, if you win this with a sunset picture, I'm deleting all my f- f- fishing social media because this isn't worth my time. I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be... Someone's going to win good, my first free fish trip giveaway with a sunset picture? No, not happening. A, Move a good, on. You're gonna, no. Now you're going to have a handful of people that are going this is to not, post... not This is not the NJ Sunset podcast, dude. Fishing. Let's I have a question. Oh, okay. Now that everyone's seen how angry it makes you, I hope they do put the sunset pictures. Guys, load up the page with sunset pictures. What's Scott, up? Scott 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 Howard's colonoscopy pictures automatically enter him into both. He's in both automatically. L, you were saying? <laughs> um <clears throat> is there a limit on how many pictures you can submit? That's a good Here's question. What we'll we that weren't a ready good question. For that. Well, no, I was. So I'm going to say there, no, there is not a limit, but you're trying to get the most likes on a picture, right? So if you throw up a ass ton of pictures, most likely you're going to divvy out likes to multiple pictures, right? <clears throat> you're better off, if you really want to win this contest, you're better off putting up one good fishing picture, fishing report, and just telling your friend, hey, you know, tell everyone, you know, come on, come check out my picture, you know, vote for me in this contest, whatever. Like, get people to come and vote for you. That's not against the rules. No, okay. it is. You could, you could put a picture up and bring, you know, anyone, bring your whole I'm elk. catch the first bluefish. They don't catch. exist anymore. They're on the uh, endangered species list. The only person that's still catching them, Scott Tarnoski, because he's like living five years behind us somehow. <laughs> He's sending me pictures of bluefish from 1989 and telling and pretending he's catching that, yeah. them right now. He was he the pic he sent me a picture of a bluefish the other day. He like he's lost a hundred pounds since that picture, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm but, here today." Scott, you're literally on a guided. You're you're taking people out on Lake Ontario right now. Your guy's reeling in a, a salmon, and you're sending me pictures from 1989 of you holding a bluefish, pretending like you're there right now. I'm going to start doing that to you guys now. It's going to be the dead of winter, and I'm going to give you a text message of just me in a tank top blue fishing. That would probably win. On that, and knowing that Facebook group, yeah, that of <laughs> anything with a tank top, like even if Chris wears a tank top, he'll win, no doubt. There you go. I mean, I can't win my own contest, I don't think, but nah, we I'd can't go end. for it. I don't even have a picture <laughs> of a fish to show anyone. It's got make it a, It's got to be like... Don't show us a picture from 10 years ago, either. It's got to be a recent fish, like 2023 fish. Yeah, I mean, that part of that, yeah, I mean, that part of the contest is kind of, you know, it's just on an honor system. I'm not going to investigate your picture and try to find out when you caught it. Like, you know, that's just honor system. And don't send me, don't send, don't send me brown trout from Salmon River. We don't, we we don't want to see that either. We, we all have those. We want to see New Jersey fish. Jersey fish. Don't send me a salmon from uh, Sodus Point. I don't care. I'd rather, I'd rather see Joe holding a five-inch bluegill. I love bluegills. Kneeling by the side of a river. I love bluegills. From New Jersey. I'd rather just hurl I... bluegills into the bushes. I'd just catch short bluegills and just throw them in bushes. I have There's another no question. <laughs> All right. She has another question. All right, she's she, interviewing she's, us now. Basically, Go. it's become her podcast. We're the guests here. What's okay. the question? Um, <clears throat> can you tell me more about this guide service on Lake Hapakong? 
Okay, Lake Apacon's the biggest lake in New Jersey. Basically, it has the best bait population of herring of any lake, most likely. Chris might argue with me a little, no. but probably not. No. No, okay. Um, the lake basically has every species of freshwater fish that you could want to catch except for northern pike. So it's a diverse okay. lake that you could be— what? Uh, salmon. It doesn't have salmon. salmon. I've caught salmon in there before. I'm not going to talk about that, though. Um, no, you haven't. Whatever. It's a very diverse lake, so you could go there for basically anything. Crappy, walleye, hybrids, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, musky, pickerel. Um, the guide service is built from guys that basically are legendary to that lake. They don't fish anywhere else. I'm friends with them. I invite them fishing all the time. The answer is always no unless I go there. They don't want to go anywhere else. Uh, even I called the one guy, Eddie Mackin, told him about the amazing day me and Chris had crappy fishing. Um, he asked where we were. I answered him, and he completely lost interest, didn't care, because I was not at Lake Pacon. So they're just like... Those guys are just Lake Pack on. Uh, there's mainly three of them: um, Eddie Mack and Aaron Graybill and Kevin Cool. Um, and then there's a bunch of other of us. I'm one of them. Chris is another one that do the bigger pontoon boat trips and stuff. But those guys do the small two on two boat uh, trips. But they just started like it's almost like a party <clears throat> boat now. Like they have a patio boat that goes out every Thursday night. And they just, you could show up and pay $80, jump on, and you're going charter boat fishing on a lake. It's it's a really, like, new idea, so it's he's trying it, see how it works. It, it sounds cool, you just have to see how it goes. But I have yeah, another but, question. Oh, God. All right, Chris <laughs> will answer. I'm tired. That's fine. Uh, <clears throat> can you bow fish on Lake Hapakong? So, you can bow fish. I could answer didn't this. Didn't you just say I was going to I see now listen, I'm a bo I'm a hunter and I've gone bow fishing, so I do know about bow fish. If you do you know about bow fishing? I I shoot bow and I fish. And I have a bow fishing setup, but All I've right, never I'll gone let Chris, because I'll let Chris answer. you what? So I'll now let, you I'll don't know Chris. the answer, so alright, he doesn't know the answer, so so I believe as a, I'm not 100% positive, but I believe you can bow fish anywhere where you can regular fish. You, but you can <clears throat> only target certain species. Like carp. you can target carp. You that's can it. Target. No, you that's... can target. Well, in Lake Opakong, that's probably it. But oh, you that's can also. It. No, yeah, it's, it's not. You can you can target invasive <laughs> flathead catfish. You can target snakeheads. <clears throat> So my problem was always, I mean, you guys know that I always eat what I catch. My problem is that I would never kill somebody that I'm not going to eat somebody. It's garden. Something. It's garden fertilizer. That's all it is. Uh, that's what you, I mean. You like, already said you were going to kill somebody, but continue. We're not <laughs> editing that out. Who said they were going to kill a person? <laughs> I did. She just did. Did she really? I missed that part. It's so like, El, yeah. I'll tell you this, because I, I carp fish down the Passaic River. Okay. Um, one guy drives the boat with the electric, I don't even do it much anymore, but one guy drives the boat with the electric motor, the other guy stands up on the top deck looking down. We do it during the day. I don't have all the lights and that stuff, but you have to, I live in Bergen County. So as you're working yourself down the Sake river, you actually, you actually have to check the police stations because every municipal town has a different law when it comes to discharging a weapon. So, like, I know once you get into the Sea Caucus realm, the Sea Caucus has a no discharge weapon, so you can't shoot the bow in Sea Caucus. Okay. But if you're on the river up, really? in, if you're on the river up into Clifton, <clears throat> Clifton, you're allowed to shoot. Yeah, like there's some towns you can't shoot a bow in your backyard. There's other towns where you can shoot a bow in your backyard. So. If you can that shoot I did up, not know. 
that's a, the the discharge of a weapon is a municipal law. So it's going to vary every Lake Apacon has seven different towns on it. So it actually probably has seven different bow fishing rules on the lake, but I've never seen Four anyone towns, think. but yeah, I get your point. I'm exact. You, you re, you're going to break down my exaggeration. No. I'm done. The, this episode's done. I have another no, question. Oh God. <laughs> We're going to keep going. Joe's. Um, do you Didn't need we... a hunting license? No. Do, do we we lost him? Chris. What's well, up? Oh, there he is. You so do... you don't, you don't need a hunting license, right? You just you need, need a fishing, a fishing... License. You have to have a fishing license. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, if Did you're you just not... kick me off the podcast, no, I, we, we tried to. I was trying to make her the co-host, and we were going to start a new one. But it all right, didn't... here's another thing, okay? Because okay. freshwater fishing and I, we just, <clears throat> I mean, I grew up freshwater fishing. That's like what you know. I grew up trout fishing with my dad, and you know, sunnies here and there, and then blue fishing was really what got me into fishing. But, um, I want to like bow hunt for mahi because like that's the only fish that i can saltwater fish that i can think of that <laughs> so, i like, mean really random um <clears throat> but think about it because you can see them you can actually sight fish for them if you really needed to why not freaking shoot them with a bow and arrow and you can actually eat that i i think it all right so mahi don't don't have a size limit either correct that's what i'm saying right there's um I, I don't know the seven? answer to that question. I, I you know what? I feel like you can't bow fish salt water though. I don't think but, so. But, but you can it says spear who? fish. I I don't know. You could so also shoot to... you, you could also shoot a shark in the head with a shotgun alongside the boat too. I mean, realistically, yeah, you, when you're shark fishing and you get a thresher up next to the boat, you're gonna shoot it in the head with a shotgun. That's what you're right. gonna do. That, and well, that's so then that would be an that would be an argument for what she wants to do. So then why can't you shoot a mahi with a dude with a bow? Since this girl's come on the show, she's talked about people throwing fish in bushes. All right, she wants to go bow fishing for mahi. She said something else that was insane first, that she wants to do. First, she wanted to bow fish for human beings. She I did slip I, that. <laughs> it's an accident. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have any more now, questions? Now I'm just picturing her shooting the guy throwing small tog in the bushes with an arrow with a line attached to it and like the guy trying to run away. <laughs> no, I'm picturing her like cuz she's telling us she has these uh, this affinity for tog so that she, there's a special place in her heart for them and this guy's tossing them in the bushes and they're just suffocating to death while she's watching yeah. them just perish. It had to be horrible for her. No, nah, that, that's... I have PTSD now. Yeah, it's terrible. Disgusting terrible. slobs. Can I just throw out there, though? So you, All right. Like, I realize that people don't want to eat carp, but I can tell you for a fact, there there are people that enjoy eating carp. They prepare it a certain way. <laughs> Look, I'm just telling you a fact. It's, I, I think I, it was I you that it. told me that you can eat albies by boil it like poach uh yeah poaching Did them I in water i think you i yeah because I, I, I definitely tell people that but I, you definitely told me that because at one point i was <clears throat> i guess i was albie fishing and i had posted you know just shared hey if anybody needs albies for shark bait or anything like that let me know and i'll save them for you i think i was going on i don't know the freaking queen mary which I don't normally badmouth any boat, but that is like the last boat that I will ever go on after my experience with them. But I digress. Um, <clears throat> they like We're to gaff everything. Them. And I was like, are you really gaffing Albies? Like, are we really doing that? Knowing that like you can't eat them. But anyway, um, yeah. so I had posted like, does anybody need any Albies for shark bait? And you had messaged me and said you could actually eat them. And I was like, ha ha, yeah, right. And you're like, no, for real, people eat them and make like tuna, like po basically poach it in liquid, like seasoned liquid and um, make tuna fish salad out of it. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'll try it. Maybe you I will. You could all, <laughs> you, you could, you could eat you anything you want. It doesn't mean it's going to be good. But no, you, no, you, yeah. listen to me. Listen to me. Um, <clears throat> 
I will try it eventually. I we just didn't catch anything because the Queen Mary sucked balls that day. So. <laughs> All right, we got to cut this episode. It just has too much in no. it. <laughs> what did you expect, Queen, okay? Put it in the what title, Queen Mary Sucks Balls. Listen. Oh, no. Where's that? Oh, that we just lost that entire port of fans. They're not in the Listen, Highlands. Someone that likes Queen Mary can come on and, and is, have a is rebuttal it, episode. Is it in the Highlands? No, it's um, it's out. Oh, that, of, it's that, in Manasquan River. Uh, no one cares um, anyway. Then. And like I said, normally I would never talk bad about it because maybe it was just that day or whatever. But the captain was rude as rude to me, and it was because I was a girl. And all yeah. right, all right. Listen, we really uh, we, appreciate, we we really appreciate having you on. We can't just let you stay on here just bashing everybody. So we have to end this eventually. But hopefully, you'll come back on anytime. Hopefully, you can be one of the people that figure out how to enter to win that contest because, like, <laughs> only three people are going to figure it out and Correct. do it correctly. So yes. it's it won't be hard to, to win it because it's not there well, won't be many. And, and let me just throw one more thing out there. Like, let's say let's say L doesn't isn't really interested in fishing freshwater on Lake Opacon. Unless I can, you can win on, on it. <laughs> Go fish. I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll check. We'll check with that. We'll check. We'll see. But like, if she wins, and she knows someone that would really love to do this, you, it's transferable. We'll just put it that way. Okay. Like, so transferable you know, to what? Well, she can like she can say, "Hey, I can't do that. I can't get over there to do this. My friend lives closer. He really likes. He really wants to do it. I'm transferring the free." Oh, pass like to give him. it to someone. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I yeah, if you win this, I don't see a problem with that. If you end up winning it, you call Aaron Grayville and you just tell him, "Say, Aaron, I'm looking to go bow fishing for hybrid striped bass and walleye. I want to shoot them." And see if he could arrange it. I don't know. He might work it out. I want to shoot him. <laughs> He's a guide service. He has to accommodate people. So whatever. And then and then you can come back on and give us your carp recipe. There you go. Aaron, uh, this girl would like to shoot a muskie with a bow. We're going to give her your phone number after the show. <laughs> L, thank you so much for coming on. You were fun. And... Uh, uh, hopefully we get to go fishing with you and hopefully you come back on again. And sure. thanks so Anytime. much. Hopefully Chris will be sure. say goodbye to you also, not just sit there and be rude. <laughs> I was waiting for you to shut up. Okay. Can I go oh now? Oh my gosh. Go. I'm done. All right. It was great having you. It's awesome. Anytime, again. really. All right. We'll see you again soon. Okay, bye, we'll see guys. you guys next week. If anyone figures out the contest, we'll uh, see you then. <laughs> <laughs>